So, hi, I'm Rupert. If you're ever in Drupal UK on Freenode, I'm Rupert J on there. And if you're not ever in Drupal UK on Freenode, why not? <laughs> Seriously, that's probably the best tip you'll get from this talk. Um, otherwise, if I'm Rupert J on Twitter, you can follow me on there if you like, but it's mainly stupid retweets and pictures of my dogs. Um, so, to give you a bit of context on kind of where I'm coming from in this talk, I work for a company called Arok, who are an online publisher. Um, so I work in-house there. Uh, we have four like main sites providing kind of niche industry news, which is probably why you've never heard of us, because you're not in those niche industries. Uh, so we cover auto, food, drink, and clothing. Uh, I pretty much just work on auto. Um, so the auto arm of the company is the only, the only part that has a Drupal site. Um, so the others are sort of general news sites. But the Drupal site that I work on, Cube, um, is kind of more in-depth than the others. So what it does is, like, for people who work for, say, you know, for Jaguar, companies like that, if they want to do research on what their competitors are up to, they come to us. And so we have this site that uses Solar pretty extensively for basically to let people search a whole load of information to find out what their competitors are up to, mm. what their suppliers are up to. If they're, a, if they're a supplier, find out what the OEMs are up to so they can figure out what to supply, stuff like that. Um, so this talk is kind of about how to use solar for things that just you know aren't in like the stuff that solar does out of the box. So I'm going to show you how to you, how to make a content admin page and do a bit of data visualization. Um, you can use any of the techniques I'm going to be talking about to kind of customize a bog standard search, which is probably the most useful thing actually. So. That is our search page, and as you can see, it's pretty ordinary looking for a solar search. So who has built something like that, or turned on the module and received something like that? Cool. And who's taken it any further than that? Like tried to tweak it and... Okay, cool, a few of you, that's good. Um, so my view on the Apache solar module is, it's quite a good sort of product for developers and that it gives you what you need to like display a search of nodes. It makes some stuff really easy, like giving you the facets on uh, taxonomy and stuff like that. Um, if you want to do any more with it, it's quite good and it provides a bunch of hooks like to let you modify your user's search experience. That's mostly what I'm going to be covering in this talk. So this is the first thing that I want to show you. Uh, so this is like our admin screen. So this replaces, you know, the default content admin screen, uh, which is the one with that horrible little filter thing at the top that users never get. You know, they apply a filter, then they forget they've applied a filter, and they come back later, and the filter's still there, and they don't know how to apply more than one filter. So one of the advantages of this kind of thing is it matches the user-facing front end, because obviously, you know, your admins they're always on the user-facing front end. This matches it. They know how to, you know, filter by a certain taxonomy term, which you can't do in the other one, and filter by content type, which you can do in the other one, but it's done in a different way. So this kind of makes more sense to our admin users. Compared to a sort of normal solar search, obviously it's laid out in a table view, and it has a bunch of extra fields. So like, by default, I think you get the created date, but you don't get the updated date, and what other stuff is there? There's priority, which is something we have that nodes don't normally have. And, uh, yeah, you know, there's extra fields. Uh, there's also a custom little date range uh, thing at the top, so you don't have to go through the facets to, you know, filter by date. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to show you how to build that type of thing. And the other thing I'm going to cover is this thing. Uh, so this is a lifecycle database for cars. So we have basically a small team that basically knows everything about the car industry. And every time the car manufacturer says they're going to produce a new car, they stick in here. And every time they decide they're going to, say, facelift an existing car, they stick it in here. Discontinue a car, they stick it in here. So this contains just like probably every car ever made back to like, I don't know, I think the mid-90s is when it starts. Um, I'm just going to switch to it and show you how it works because the picture is a bit dull. This is a bit more interesting. Uh, 
So like, when you start, it's a solar search laid out in a table view like that. But basically, if we filter it down to everything that's currently in production, uh, then say you're interested in all the Toyotas, and then you can flick it into time series view, and bam, this is what Toyota's up to at the moment. From there, say so we can go and find. Let's go and see what they're doing with the GT86. So, from there, you can go into a bunch of detail about the GT86 and stuff like that. Um, so, each of those is a custom entity. And the custom entities in this system for groups makes models, plants, platforms. So, I'm going to show you how to like denormalize your data and sort of display it all in one search as well. Okay, that's all. Okay. There was a bit of a lie in the title of this talk. I realised after I submitted it, I called it Beyond the Search Page, but actually everything I've shown you so far is a search page, just really heavily customised. Um, so, that's the admin search, and that's the time series thing. So yeah, Apache Solar Module, it lets you create as many search pages as you like. Um, they share kind of common traits by default, so like they share the available sorts, um, you have to do a bit of work to differentiate the facet blocks, um, but I've, I've managed to differentiate them in these, in these systems, so I'll show you how to do a bit of that as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> wasn't expecting that one. Um, so this is the first thing, so if you create multiple search pages in there, so you can see this is basically what you use to display different data in each one. So that is our bog standard search. So that displays nodes or files. And it's also limited by this custom flag that we have, which is whether something is a bit of consulting work, which obviously our, custom, our customers have paid for, so we don't want that to appear into all and sundry in the search. Uh, the other thing, that's that equivalent from the other page, that's limited to our custom entity type and the bundle type of production run which is like the thing that links it all together. So we have production runs. Every production run has a number of makes, it has a number of models, it has a number of plants it's produced at, stuff like that. So we're just showing those. Um, you'll know, do any of you know what uh, Lucene is? So I think Solar kind of unfairly gets a lot of credit because it's basically just a web service for, for Lucene. Um, so these things here are uh, Lucene queries. So this is basically saying uh, this field, limit to this value or this value, and limit this value, uh, sorry, this field to this value. Uh, I'm slightly out of order, actually, but uh, this is another thing we have um, built in a slightly different way. This is a specialised image search. That uses um, solar views, uh, but you can still use, say, all the alter hooks and stuff. That I'm going to show you to get your data into solar, and then you can pull it out with solar views if you like. So, to go back to basics a bit, what is solar? So, like I said before, solar is a web service, and that's an example query to solar. You probably notice it's basically just like a request to a web server. Um, so you issue a request, it looks like that, and you get a response. And if you can read that, you can see it's just a URL with parameters. So let's make it a bit more helpful. So if you decode it, uh, you get something like that. And the first thing I spotted when I saw that was like, we have a repeat of parameters here. Are you allowed to do that? If you're used to PHP, you'll probably know that if you pass the same thing in, well, two get parameters with the same name, you'll only get one of them. That's a bit of a PHPism. Um, you know, the uh, URL standard actually lets you supply the same parameter more than once, so Solar will happily understand that. Um, one thing I have done between the mess and this one is I've taken all the facet parameters out because I'm not really covering that much of facet API in this. Um, so if you do look at your own request, you'll get a whole bunch of stuff starting with F. That's what that is. Um, so in here, you, to kind of understand what it's doing, working from top to bottom, so this was a search for Toyota, 
So Q is just the plain text string that went in as a search. Uh, FQ stands for filter query. Um, so that, you probably, you, if you were really paying attention, you might recognize that those were the constraints that I put in on the search page. So that's limiting to our custom entity type, it's limiting to production runs. And that last FQ, that was one of the facet links that I clicked. And that's what it uses, basically, to filter the query down. So Solar will crunch across its index, it'll say, get me everything that matches Toyota. And then it'll filter it down with those things, and then you'll only get those things back. Uh, FL, that stands for field list, I think. Uh, that is basically a list of fields that are going to come back in the results set. Uh, if you, you'll probably notice that a lot of them have prefixes, so I'll cover that in a second. Uh, but the first few are the ones that basically come out of the box with Apache Solar. So that's all sort of Drupal specific stuff, which is the ID, the entity ID, entity type bundle, stuff like that. That's common to pretty much everything that we're going to Solar. The rest of the stuff is stuff that you create in a field API or create it manually. Um, the rest aren't really that important. You might have to play with QF a bit. That is what it's searching across. Um, so you get most, oh, this is the field that it's searching across, and this is the weighting that it's giving it. So you can see content is amazingly important. It gets a weighting of 50, and say the inline tag is not that important, rating 1. So it'll score that 40 t a match in that 40 times higher than a match in that. Um, sort is probably another one that you might have to play with, but it's kind of obvious what that does. Any questions so far? Do interrupt me. Yes? Um, is this search API or is this just the search of the Apache Solar? This is just Apache Solar. Right. Mostly because we started with the bog standard Apache Solar search and it's kind of grown out from there. Um, yeah, you can probably use the same sort of techniques that I'm going to be talking about in a bit um, with um, search API. And certainly when I looked at creating the system with like the graphs and stuff on it, that sort of thing couldn't be done with Search API at the time, but I think it can now, just on performance grounds, but I'll come back to that. Um, so the prefix, those prefixes there, all the like the SS stuff and the SM stuff, those are dynamic fields. Uh, they're defined in uh, the schema.xml that you get with the module and you link into Solar. Um, so basically... That's saying uh, what type of data it is, uh, which is the first character, so it's like integer, string, boolean. Then the second character is whether it's a multi-value field or a single-value field, because M or S. Um, as it says at the bottom, most of the fields are added for you, but there are a few little sort of extra things that you want to add. Um, so like you get the um, get taxonomy fields for free, uh, the text fields, as individual, uh, text fields as individual fields you don't get. You'll need to add them yourself. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, and also sort fields and stuff like that. I will come back to that. Basically, the main thing to take away from this is you will need to feed more data to Solar. That's my dog helping me decorate. Um, so, yeah, common things that you will need to feel, feed to Solar. Stuff like denormalization. So like what I was saying before about our data model having, say, production runs that have a plant and then plants have a country. Uh, if, if I go back to... Sorry, I went way too far. Oh, you can't see it. But there is another filter down here that says country. So we've denormalized it. So we're copying data from the plant onto the production run and from the referenced country onto the production run as well. Actually, don't be afraid to copy extra data onto the entities because you will probably have to do that. So is that the actual Drupal entity? So they have fields that hold denormalized information that gets indexed. Sorry, start that one again? So you'll you know that you're denormalizing it to all the entities. Okay. would have fields that would the derived information from the related entities. Yes. It's actually on the slide after this one. <laughs> and the other thing that you'll probably have to copy on 
on the, is multi-value fields. So a little quirk of solo, which kind of makes sense when you think about it, is you can sort by single value fields, but you can't sort by multi-value fields. Because obviously if something has more than one value, where does it go in the sort order? So what you'll probably have to do for that is assemble a single valued string that represents every value in the multi-value. So like on our plant list, let's say the, first, the most important plant is put in first, and you want it, that one to be the one that, uh, where it appears in search. So you effectively you know, concatenate all the plant names into one, stick that as a single value that starts with sort, use that for the sort field. So, so this is how you add extra data. So there's a hook called hook Apache Solo Index Documents Alter. Basically that is fed an array of documents, um, an entity, and an environment ID. So this is what gets called over and over again when you're re rebuilding your Solar Index. So the Solar module in its hook cron, it just iterates over the entities in the table that are queued up for indexing. And it can build multiple documents for each one. It usually only builds one, but you can use this hook to change it so you have multiple documents for each entity if you really want to. Can't think of a use case for that, to be honest, but you, know, you can if you want. So that's what resets document to get the first document. And then all you do is call the set field method on document. Uh, you'll recognize the field manager from earlier. And you whack in whatever data you want. Um, set field is quite intelligent. It doesn't really care whether it's a single or multi-value. It figures it out for you. Uh, like I said before, most of the field data is included for you. But you don't have to be including field data here. You can include anything you like. So like in our admin search, um, we have an expiry date, which is calculated from the priority that's assigned to the content. So when we're running our indexing hook here, uh, we calculate the date in the future when a piece of content is set to expire. We stick that in Solar as a separate field, and then we can use that to sort on to find the content that's about to expire. And we also do a bit of theming on it to like, you know, color it in red and say, this is about to expire, go and update it. Um, you might be wondering why you put the data in Solar when you can kind of, you know, pull out the stock data and then load it yourself in the background. And this is related to the versus Search API question, because when I built all this, Search API actually worked like that. Um, it just query Solar for IDs, it get those IDs back, then it would do an entity load. I don't think it does that anymore. But it does if you include any field that's not fully indexed. Cool, thank you. So But like, so yeah, not loading the data makes you know stuff built this way really, really fast. So the original version of this actually did work by just loading entities, and then I kind of put Solar in under it. But if you refresh, you can see that loads that fast, and that is what one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, that's each of those blue lines is an entity. <laughs> So even if we turn off Toyota and just show literally everything that's in production everywhere in the world, and yeah, our team are that good. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, to check your work when you're adding extra fields, if you don't know about this, this is amazingly useful. This is built into Solar. Actually, I'll go and load the real one. So there we go. If you just point your web browser at Tomcat or Jetty or whatever, and you get add slash Solar, you get this. Click into admin, and the useful bit that I just showed you is the schema browser. So you can go here, you go to fields, and it will show you every single field that you've got in the index. And yeah, I have more than I thought, but hey. Like I said, don't be afraid to add data. And so for each of these, you can go in and you can see some info on it. So you can see that most of the content in our solar index is 67,000 articles. Uh, the production run, which is the base entity for that graph thing I showed you, that's after it. This is just generally useful for checking that data is going in correctly. 
One little gotcha on this, which really annoyed me the first time I found it, is these are uppercase, but they're only uppercase because the CSS makes it uppercase. <laughs> and yeah, they are totally case in, they are case insensitive. No, case sensitive. Yeah, one of the taxonomy ones, what is it? I think it's... Oh yeah, sorry, something I should say is uh, Apache Solar, the module, um, for stuff like taxonomy terms, it'll add an ID and a string, which is the name, so you can pull them both out. So there's kind of a matching pair for most of these. So if we go for like, let's find a taxonomy term. So like, SMVID drive configuration. Yeah, that actually, if we do this, look, there we go, capital D, thanks Solar. Anyway, so like, that has the strings in it, and then there will be a corresponding IM. Where are we? Oh, I thought it was IM drive configuration. Uh, it does by vid. I can't remember. One of these vid ones, right, is the drive configuration. I promise. Might be that one because it's got three values in it. But anyway, I digress. I think. So. So that's how you get the data in. This is how you get the data out and do various other things. So there's another hook called hook patch solar query alter. That is past the query that you're going to run. And basically, you just call the methods on the query and add in the parameters you want. Um, so if you remember back to that massive slide where I decoded the request, um, you remember FL is the field list. So we're adding our foo field into that field list. That, yeah, field list. So when we make our request, we will get foos back as well. Uh, the other things you can do with this is you can change the query fields, which is what it searches across. So if you remember out of the box, it searched across all the tags, and there's a special field for like the header values and stuff like that, so you can place different boost weightings on the headers. Um, for our simple entity that we use for storing the automotive data, it's just a label and content, so we limit it down to them. Save Solar a bit, uh, doing a bit of extra work. Uh, also, more stuff you can do in modifying queries. You can change the number of results to return, so that massive screen with literally everything in it, this is how you get literally everything out of it. Uh, like I said there, there isn't a value saying get me everything, you just put a really big number in. And also, you can change the sort order. So this is an actual bit of code for our system, which is why it's got the conditions in. Um, so it's saying if a sort order isn't requested, and we're on basically the front page, change the solar sort to change date. That's so when basically you turn up on the page, you get the newest stuff at the top. If you run a search, it, that, that condition will fail, and then you get it sorted by relevance, like solar does normally. So. Another thing to bear in mind is you might have added the data to sort on, but you need to make that sort available. And the way you do that is you override, um, where is solar base query. So we have this class over at the base query. Uh, we call the parent method, uh, basically to get the default sorts. We add in the ones we want, which is the DS change field, uh, sort field that I pointed out in the table view in the admin screen back at the start. And yeah, basically that's all that class does. And there is a variable that you set which tells the Apache Solar module which query or class to instantiate to run the query. So you swap it for that, no, it says at the top, swap it for that, you're good to go. Um, there's also a module called Apache Solar Sort, which you can use to manage your sorts. Um, you can turn them on and off, and you can choose the default sort and the default order, which you can't do out of the box, oddly. So, to build something like that, create a search page, apply the limits you need, add the extra data you'd need to the solar documents, Alter the query to add the additional fields that you want to display. Place a facet box and theme it. And see it. So the theming on this is basically the whole table is spat out. But there's sorry, I'll go back a bit. There's two um, hooks that are used for theming: the search results and search result. Helpfully. So search results is the whole thing. Search result is an individual result. 
Uh, so search results spits out table, search result spits out table row, and that's kind of it for that, actually. It's quite simple to do. This one is obviously a bit more complicated because it does loads more stuff. So. so when it's in table view like that, that's done in exactly the same way. Um, but Solar gives you a hook, which whose name I can't remember, but hey, it's on the next slide, so let's find that. There we go. Apache Solar Search Page Alter. Um, so basically, <coughs> this is just saying, if we're on that page, it's called PLDB, um, and we've requested the time series view, um, basically all this function here does is uh, check the get parameters to see if you've asked for the time series view. And if it's searched, it switches out the theme hook for this custom theme hook here, which does all the other stuff. And basically, in that theme hook, it, uh, it you get the search results as an array, and there's a custom object that kind of does a load of grouping. I shall just switch back. So you can see the vehicles are grouped by segment, and then they're grouped by model. For oh, there aren't they here? <laughs> so you could have multiple models occupying the same timeline. So there's like two layers of grouping, which is why it's all done custom and not, you know, done in Solar. And then it just spits it out. So it's not actually as custom as it might look. So that is actually kind of it. Any questions? Yes. So it's looking at. Um, we use the views to. So we're talking about the search. We've just got the basic views come through. Yeah. We've got multiple content types. Okay. And this is kind of like, can you then theme? The, so like the potentially where the links go to and everything are different for the different content types, but we want them to like kind of be in the list with the relevancy. Is that possible? Um. So. So you know, like in Google, if you search for yeah. a place, you'll get like a a little mini map with a place name, and you can go through to the map through that. But then, ah, then they have all their still. I get what you So the question was, I get what you're asking, um, can you run one search result and then show kind of different listings of search results split up into different content types individually with custom stuff for each one? Yes, but also having stuff in the re relevancy. So like if you've got, we've got loads of content and then you've like got people. Yeah. So someone searches for a name. The, that name would appear in the search results like normal, but you could put a little box on the side and theme that as like a, to pull that out. Well, honestly, so I don't quite understand what you're asking. Uh, <laughs> I think you could change the um, template in the result hook when you're searching. You can, yeah, you can for each result, but I think he's after sort of grouping them individually and displaying them. Yeah. <laughs> Probably your answer in all honesty. If you want to go really crazy, I've written in my, in my sandbox, I've got a way of putting Facet API results through views. So you can actually use, you can display the facets and how many there are and then work through them with views. Yeah. So that's a way of putting, you know, there are so many of this type of thing on the map and different points on the map and grouping them like <coughs> Cool, look at his sandbox. So Cool. Who are you? What's your username? Eeks. Hi, you're Eeks. Hi. Who's yeah. never met? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, talk to Eeks. Any more questions? Yes. Um, you, you talked about denormalizing um, entities before indexing them. Yeah. Couldn't you do that in the index document also? I did. Oh, is that where you do the denormalization? Yeah, that's what I did. But it's also the entities you don't touch them and say, oh, you just at the point of indexing. Correct. To the denormalization for the indexing only. Yeah, I'll show you the actual code for that if you want, just so you can see exactly what it's doing. Uh, let's find it. So this is our actual code for that, um, unlike the very sort of cut down version that I gave you. Um, so you can see 
it receives the production run entity. Um, we have these custom because that entity is a totally custom type. We have a class for it instead of messing around with fields and okay. like that. So we can just call get group. If it gets a group, add the group field. If it gets a make, add the make field. If it gets a model name, add the model name field. Okay. Yeah. And if we go down to something where we're tra traversing like two levels of the tree, like the plants, wherever the plants have gone. Ah, actually, plants work slightly differently. So yeah, it adds the plant reference in there. Okay, so it's all in, in the search index, basically. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, cool. And then for the countries, which are property of the plant, it does... Where the hell is it? Yeah, here we go. It does this weird little thing. It is, this is so that you get the hierarchy from the country taxonomy correctly. So basically, it groups all the countries together, kind of pretending that all those country references appeared on the entity that was passed in. Yeah, yeah. And then it passes it to Apache Solar's term referencing callback, which kind of does all the hard work, assembles the data correctly, and sticks it on the document. Mm. Yes. Uh, what? Yes. Are you having to do all these manual mappings, or are they there on the default and these are alterations? So you're altering what it's actually indexed in um, You get a lot of the stuff for free. So like before it's passed into this hook, you have, um, the all, are there. yeah, they are there. It's basically just that we want some stuff mapped in a very specific way. So, anyone else? Yes. Um, you said before that search API module being used to you used to have to do an entity load. Yeah. Now that's maybe changed, but do you know any more about the differences between search API and this method? Um, uh, when I looked at search API last. Um, it was a while ago, and they had wildly different schemas. My understanding is that has since changed in an effort to let the two modules cooperate better. But having different schemas would mean that you couldn't like easily index the data with one and sort of receive it from the other. So if I'd started this project a few months later, I might have actually used Search API for it. But I, I, I'm going to defer to Eeks, because he's actually used Search API. Um, if, as, it's, it's a bit holy war, to be honest. In part. <laughs> so, I mean, but the biggest difference is, if your content, to me, if your content is already in Drupal, and it's already entities, um, you get a lot more flexibility to build stuff from the admin interface with lots of quite powerful views. Because it, no, it, um, Search API uses the information you can get from the entity Yeah, so that's kind of a big one because like, some of the data that we have in Solar isn't actually stored directly in Drupal. It's calculated from data that we store on entities, but the Solar Index is the only place it lives because it's only used for searching and theming search results and stuff like that. You can make custom fields, but then you have to declare them to search entities. Yeah, and you'd have to calculate it on the entity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more sort of point and click with search API. Oh, God, so yes. That, that, that was the other thing. I installed the module, and there's a giant list of checkboxes, and I'm like, oh, I can't be asked to check all the <laughs> checkboxes. So, so there can be, you're writing lots of code, where search API, you tick a few things. I like it. Okay. If, if what you want to do is, can be done with those checkboxes, yeah. you're probably better off with it, and maybe a bit easier to use. But Apache Solar is probably more flexible at the moment. Yes. If you've got custom data, so. Yeah. Any more questions? You mentioned that you had uh, a solar search and also an Apache solar views. Okay. Yeah. When would you use a solar search and when would you use a solar views page? So, the solar view in question. Fumbled it. 
was that one there? And I've been a little on. This is actually booked by my colleague Richard, who you might know on IRC of Silicon Meadow. I've been a little unfair to him, and I've taken a screenshot from something he's halfway through building, <laughs> which is why it's got the entities fluffed and things overlap in places. But hey, um, this is actually uh, put, it was put together pretty quickly. Basically, you just turned on Solar Views. Um, this is, I believe, the Wookmark plugin for Views, which is how it does the tiling stuff. Uh, he's also been looking at masonry as well. So using Solar Views is kind of a no-brainer if you want to use one of these layout plugins. Actually, uh, the admin view that I showed you earlier, that's probably another good candidate for solar views because obviously you could just switch the layout to table as well. Um, but yeah, something like the really custom thing with all the swim lanes probably wouldn't fancy doing that in views theming. So, I think so it mainly comes down to presentation from your perspective? I think so but then I'm quite happy writing hooks to mess with the data. Yeah. If you want it all nice and point and clicky, you might prefer views. So, any other questions? Cool, well, I think we're done. Thank you.